So now we're going to look at the third property of indifference curves. The third property says that indifference curves are convex. So what exactly did convexity mean again? Well, as we see here in this diagram, we've got a convex indifference curve. So what we're going to do is take it from the perspective here of the origin, and we're going to look to see what the curvature of that indifference curve is. Well, as we can see here, from this perspective, it's kind of bowed outwards. So that's going to be that kind of convexity uh, shape. On the left here, we've got a difference curve that's wrong. So we've got a concave indifference curve. So from the perspective of the origin, we've got a curve that kind of bows inwards. So why exactly is that important? What we're going to say here in this wrong indifference curve diagram, that this particular person does not prefer any variety. So that's to say that they're going to get the same value consuming all of good Y or all of good X. Is that realistic? Well, let's say that you want to consume two goods. You're going to have chips and you're going to have some Coke. Well, you can consume only bags of chips and get a utility value of 50, or you can consume only cans of Coke and get the same utility value of 50. But is that realistic? I mean, I find when I have uh, more, more chips to eat that my mouth gets really dry and I need something to drink. I'm going to want some of that variety. That's what we see here on, in this diagram. So if you keep having more and more bags of chips, we're really not going to increase our utility value any. What we would prefer to have is somewhere lower here, where you've got a better combination of some bags of chips and some Coke. And we're going to see how that relates in the next section, consumer equilibrium. So what exactly is going on? Well, if you've seen in uh, perhaps a more technical class, that's going to represent the diminishing marginal returns concept. So what we've got here is we're giving up one bag of chips, and we want to see how many extra cans of Coke we need to get us back to that same utility value of 50. So as we see here, we've given up one bag of chips, and perhaps we need only uh, one can of Coke in order to get us back at that uh, 50 utility. But here, if we give up another bag of chips, it might take several cans of Coke to get us back to that utility value of 50. So you see here that we're going to need more and more cans of Coke in order to equal that one bag of chips. But in this case, the opposite was happening. If we give up one bag of chips, we're going to need, say, three cans of Coke. But if we give up yet another bag of chips, maybe we only need one can of Coke. And then here, one bag of chips could equal half a can of Coke. So we're seeing kind of the opposite relationship here. So kind of to recap here, we do in fact want variety. So that's going to be represented by this indifference curve here, represented by that convex shape.